Ladies and gentlemen, we're striped up on a Saturday right now for the That One Dude of this week. And hey, fellas, 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 the That One Dude video, per usual. We're working on the weekend, per usual. Shout out Drake, shout out Future. Hey, we've evolved right now, and we're going to be finding the best pick, the best leverage play per position as of this recording right here. Now, these videos, you find diamonds in the rough, right? The whole point is not to play every single one of the players in this video. It's to handpick where it makes sense for your lineup. Cortland Sutton, 1% owned last week, 30 points. That doesn't always happen, right? Aaron Jones was like 4% owned. He gets there on a 60-yard run. We take it, though, 18 points at low ownership. So we're trying to find these leverage plays. Guys that are going to produce over the long term, pretty similarly, who are 4 or 5% owned, compared to the guys that are getting steamed up because there's an injury on their team, because they've played well for a week or two, because the matchup looks good, because the price points are $300 cheaper. Instead of being 7 k there's not sticker shock. It's 6700 or 5700 instead of 6 k and it makes the ownership just spike upwards instead of those guys being five or six percent they start being 12 and 14 percent in some of the chalkier plays in the slate sometimes it's warranted and hey you should be playing chalky players but not every single player in your lineup should be the highest owned guy in the slate that's not how you're doing this you got to find a leverage play so that's what we do here we go position by position and this week's a 10 game slate this is going to be one of the shortest slates we ever see this week next week because of these london games and a lot of teams on by so just 10 games makes it a lot harder to find leverage plays but we found them we found them this week. I'm trying to find guys in single digit ownership, ideally 5% or below. We've been doing this for a couple of years now, and I think we're starting to trend here with these low owned video type guys. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. The inception of it here, which means you're getting the OG takes, the OG schmackaroos. Yo, alrighty. So, this is what we're going to do. You're going to take two seconds of your time, if you indeed will, and nobody's forcing you here to hit the subscribe button and join this lovely community. And we're going to slide into the quarterback leverage play of the week. This man resides after being a number one overall pick after tearing up his motherfucking knee he resides in cincinnati and that man's name is indeed joe burrow who is sixty three hundred dollars this week who i am projecting out currently for 20.8 fantasy points on a median projection at just four percent projected ownership now joe burrow checks a good amount of boxes a projection over 20 fantasy points for a quarterback on a short short slate check under five percent owned leverage okay check he's right now looking at a 26 team implied total that's a good environment checks now the spots he doesn't check we slide away from those is the fact that he's only attempting like 30 attempts per game right now he only has like 260 yards per game but 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 we're hoping that changes this week in a matchup against detroit where they currently rank right now 31st in overall defense and 32nd in coverage grades according to pro football focus we're hoping that that is an environment where he's going to have t higgins back and healthy now after having a whole week to recover from maybe a little bit of a tweak of his shoulder jamar chase tyler boyd cj ozoma the passing game and now joe mixon 29 percent last week practicing in full this week with maybe even though samaji p ryan mixed in a more dynamic pass catching running back than a p ryan when you have this environment here and you have a situation where you can attack through the air we're hoping that this can be a nice low owned spot for joe mixon and the way that detroit is playing in terms of being feisty the only undefeated team against the spread at five and oh meaning that they consistently are underrated you have opening as a two and a half point favorite three in a lot of spots now cincinnati there's no doubt in my mind that this game could easily be early on in it 10 nothing Detroit and they're playing from behind and you get the Joe Burrow 35 passing yard game so Joe Burrow at low ownership does at least stand out a little bit I will be completely honest with you though on a 10 game slate with 20 teams I don't really feel the need to get super different if you watch the final thoughts video if you're gonna watch and you're on Patreon you're gonna watch the Sunday stream tomorrow I mean I'm just fine loading up on a shit ton of Patrick Mahomes and like one or two other quarterbacks you don't really have to get down here but if you are looking if you are looking in a Millie Maker type build a large field GBP you know those shitty contests if you're looking there this would be a guy to go to now we slide into, and I actually, 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 I pause myself there. Player prop. Player prop for Joe Burrow. There's a couple of ones I like. His passing yards are interesting, but the main one I'll take is the over 19 fantasy points on Joe Burrow. That will give us a little bit more rushing yards, or hopefully he starts to slide like Aaron Rodgers told him. That basically me, me, me means, blah, that we need to see two passing touchdowns or two total touchdowns from Burrow and somewhere around the 250 yardage mark. So I like the combination of those numbers. So you can see it slides up here. If you want to take this player prop, this is on prize picks, you get a risk free bet up to $100 Ruskies. It is that simple. You get a free bet up to 100 bucks. It's risk free. If you don't hit the bet, they'll give you 100 bucks. If you do hit the bet, they'll still give you 100 bucks. There's your schmacks. Use the code SAL. It is linked down below on Price Picks. That's the first prop we take over 19 fantasy points for Mr. Joseph Joey A Y O -A J O E. Your cup of Joe Burrow. And now let's get into the running back position. And this is where I'm telling you, don't play all these guys together because I will never, 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 in my opinion, right now, at least how this NFL season is going and these teams associate together and these players. I'm not correlating in my stacks Joe Burrow with Joe Mixon, but hey, here's another leverage play for you. Again, do not play these guys together. 
their best leverage plays at their specific positions, right? When you're looking at the overall position, when you look at your total lineup, yeah, don't be playing them all together. It's not going to work out for you more times than not. Even though last week was great. You look at Dan Arnold as a low owned tight end at 2% ownership. He pops the fuck off, almost has a hundred yard bonus. Lovely, lovely time last week in the that one dude streets. But Joe Mixon, $6,400, only played 29% of the snaps last week. That's no good. But hey, Samaji so Piran's banged up this week. Mixon looked good. He's practicing now in full this week. And I'm expecting the full Joe Mixon experience. But a lot of people aren't catching on yet. And also some other players in the price range they're jumping to. And that's a big fuck mistake and by the way i always put comparisons on twitter for like joe burrow here joe burrow compared to taylor heineke he's 500 more expensive yet so the price point is sensitive there because he's above 6k and heineke's below 6k and heineke's in this nice environment versus kansas city but projection wise same exact projection basically and if you see the ownership heineke's going to come up with double the ownership because of the fact that they want to attack the the secondary of kansas city which is one of the worst in the league but oh yeah the worst in the league is actually detroit so there's a little interesting comparison for you there between joe burrow and taylor Heineke. Now I want to do that same comparison with Joe Mixon right now. I currently have Joe Mixon projecting for 15.6 fantasy points. And that's with me expecting him to be somewhat limited. Like if you told me Joe Mixon is not going to be limited at all in this matchup against Detroit, which is bleeding fantasy points, Alexander Madison smashes against him. Uh, David Montgomery and Damian Williams combined to smash against him. It's just like a, a lovely spot every single week, no matter who's playing Detroit. Aaron Jones goes for four touchdowns in the receiving game or four touchdowns total, three in the receiving game, smashes against them on Monday Night Football Week 2, right? Anybody is destroying this Detroit team right right now on the ground so if you told me joe mixon is going to get his normal 80 plus percent of the snaps or 80 percent of the snaps roll yeah i like joe mixon even more he'll project for 18 fantasy points and he'll look even better so we're kind of getting this really nice uh this murkiness is dropping a lot of people's projections which is lowering his ownership and their expectations but just look at joe mixon on this tweet i have right here compared to jonathan taylor jonathan taylor is a 10 point favorite sure jonathan taylor is coming off of a massive monday night football game so now all of a sudden everybody wants to play jonathan taylor because he's facing houston's terrible defensive line jonathan taylor i currently have the matchup for actually Mr. Uh, Joe Mixon being a better matchup in terms of his matchup against Detroit, right? And he's a favorite, okay. But Jonathan Taylor is a 10-point favorite. So he's projected for 16.2 points. So very similar. I have Jonathan Taylor for like a half a point more than Joe Mixon. And he's more expensive than Joe Mixon. And he's projecting out for 14% ownership as of now. Now, maybe that goes down to 12 or 10%. But either way, I'm expecting Jonathan Taylor to be maybe even double the ownership of Joe Mixon as of right now. That's where it stands. But he's more expensive and projects out for a very similar price tag. And I would actually say that Joe Mixon's ceiling is a little bit higher here in my opinion for what he can do in the receiving game as just a better pass catching running back than Jonathan Taylor I know Jonathan Taylor had a 76 yard touchdown he didn't really have to do too much on that touchdown if you ask me so that is where I'm at right now with Joe Mixon I mean if you just look at a lot of things he, he checks the boxes volume check pass catching role check that's going to be coming back this week since he's healthy a favorite check 26 implied points almost four touchdown total for him which implies that the running back probably sees a touchdown more times than not. At least one of the running backs do. So check, right? All these checks look pretty good for us. Joe Mixon's props, they're not in the markets right now. They're not in the marketplace on Underdog Fantasy, uh, where you can get a free 10 bucks if you use the code SAL. They're not in the marketplace on Price Picks that we just talked about. So I'm waiting for these props to pop up. I do like the over 0.5 total touchdowns. I like the total touchdowns, not rushing. You can take rushing too. But the ones like total touchdowns on DraftKings and FanDuel, if you see that number pop up anywhere on Underdog or Price Picks, I would take it because I like the total one. You get the receiving work in there as well. If he sees four targets in this game or runs 20 plus routes we can take advantage of those opportunities as well but even if you can't find it over a half a rushing touchdown i think makes sense for mr joseph mixon another comparison would be deandre swift deandre swift i projected for 16 points at 6300 so it's very similar price very similar projection 12 percent owned so double the ownership right now of joe mixon at just six percent i think we're going to get a very very nice spot out of joe mixon this week now let's go over to the wide receiver position we got a wide receiver tight end and then a one percent flyer tough to find a one percent flyer when there's only 10 games in the slate so this guy might be like two percent home but it's an interesting play wide receiver position right now is a man who continues to make people bat their heads in i played him i think like week three he didn't do much for me at all it might have been week four it was against dallas i can't remember completely these weeks already we're up to like six they say the human brain can only remember like seven or nine numbers i can't even remember which that is i'm all over the place right now we need some more coffee fill up my cup let's get fucked up off the caffeine i'm all out over here but it's robbie anderson at 4800 he now jumps below the 5k price tag he now last week he should have had a 50 plus yard touchdown barely under thrown by Sam Darnold uh, a pass breakup last second by Avante Maddox he gets his hand in the air would have been a 50 plus yard touchdown would have kept Robbie Anderson probably at 5800 instead of 4800 dollars and right now the people are getting big mad at Robbie Anderson's usage Robbie Anderson though still seeing six targets per game still seeing downfield usage and now the price point is basically as low as we've seen it in a matchup against Minnesota which is a favorable matchup for a team that has a 24 team implied total it's just like a one point spread so this game should be pretty neutral back and forth and you're getting 15.5 air yards per target right now to Robbie Anderson which what does that mean it means you're probably not playing 
him, even though he's cheap in cash, because Robbie Anderson and what the fuck is cash to begin with, my God. But Robbie Anderson is going to be a player that is boomer bust based on his air yards. He's boomer bust downfield. He is not running any intermediate routes. But they said last week and they didn't really show it, but they want to start to get the guy involved. I mean, he's the highest paid wide receiver and just got signed to a two year extension on this team. I expect him as the season goes on to start to produce more. I mean, this is the squeaky wheel narrative. Like Allen Robinson, we would hope produces more, right? The squeaky re- wheel narrative of Robert Woods paid off in a major way. People want that to happen with Allen Robinson, but they're just not throwing the ball, right? 19 fucking attempts. He's yet to throw the ball 20 times in a game, Justin Fields. They're playing at such a slow pace. Even if he even if he starts to see a 25% target share, it's like five targets. How's that going to do anything for him? Whereas Robbie Anderson, when Sam Darnold's throwing the ball 35 times, if he sees a 25% target share, right? And he starts to see eight, nine targets in a game, it's going to start to look better for you and there's a, a, an actual way based on the way that they play that it can work for you. And if Christian McCaffrey, who is trending 50-50 right now, doesn't suit up again this week, more targets, yeah, for Chuba Hubbard, but also Robbie Anderson can go around. So Robbie Anderson right now, 4,800. I have him for 13.4 points at just 5% projected ownership. It's only a GBP type play for me, and he's cheap. We can compare this to a couple of other players who definitely project out better than him by about a point or so, but the ownership is higher. You're getting a more expensive Sterling Shepard who's expected to return. 14.4 point projection, so about a point more for about double the ownership, 8, 9% on. I do like Sterling Shepard a good amount, but this is just ways to get some leverage. T. Higgins, who I like a lot. I mean, I'm on record this week in some videos saying that outside of maybe Terry McLaurin T. Higgins might be my favorite play in the slate. 5,300. He's $500 more than Robbie Anderson. I have him for 14.8 points, about a point more. He's going to be coming in at 12% projected ownership compared to Anderson's just five. So double his ownership. I don't think anybody out there would be shocked if Robbie Anderson goes for five catches, 80 yards, and a touchdown and has 20 fantasy points and outscores both of Sterling Shepard and T. Higgins this week, right? So that's the whole point of the leverage. That's Cortland Sutton last week. Cortland Sutton, I thought, would come in around four or 3%. He came in at 1% ownership and he outscored by a lot everybody in his price range, scoring 28 fantasy points, seven catches, a buck 20, and a touchdown versus Steelers. So I think that's the interesting comparisons that we just showed with T Higgins, maybe some Sterling Shepard, a prop that I do like right now, and you can get it on both sites, depending on where you have access. Maybe you want to double down on it uh, on prize picks. It's the better number 37 and a half over receiving yards for Robbie Anderson. I have this number in the fifties, like the high fifties. Like obviously the baselines are going to be off a little bit based on what he's done this year. Maybe I'm over projecting it. I have him for like 57 receiving yards. So this is a massive smash. This is the best prop potentially in the entire week, over 37 and a half receiving yards for Robbie Anderson. You can get that free bet up to hundred dollars. If you want to take it on prize picks, it's also over 40 and a half over over on underdog if you only have access over on underdog you can use the code sal for a free 10 bucks over on underdog so those are props for robbie anderson let's slide now into the tight end position so the tight end position on a 10 game slate it's tough like you're gonna have your high ownership guys like darren waller pick up some high ownership guys who are picking up ownership is like you know travis kelsey's all these players i'll look at at least hunter henry here i think he's an interesting candidate for us at 3900 dollars we're trying to find a guy under five percent on who's actually trending in a positive direction who actually has some stability to what he's doing like i look at evan ingram and yeah, sterling shepherd's coming back Kadarius tony's there the backup quarterback potentially playing ingram's not even getting usage when all those guys were out like sterling shepherd so we look at these past couple of weeks with hunter henry and i'm seeing decent stuff i'm seeing five targets and eight targets which were each at those points in time his season highs you're seeing four and six receptions you're seeing 13.2 and 19.2 fantasy points which is obviously surviving off of touchdowns but the usage is there he's finished as a top 12 tight end top 10 tight end in back-to-back weeks and i think the usage should be there he should be able to rival his 40 routes run that he had against new orleans in week three he should be able to see some some of that this week when you factor in that they're now facing dallas as four point underdogs with a decent implied total and you're starting to build this chemistry for hunter henry less routes run for john smith there so i think it's nice i have him for eight and a half fantasy points at three percent ownership at 3,900. For comparison reasons, you can see my tweet compared to Jared Cook, who is significantly cheaper, who is attached to a better quarterback and probably a better game environment. So I understand why the ownership is coming in here. But point projection wise, I have Jared Cook for nine points, a half a point more than Hunter Henry. And I have Jared Cook coming in at 8% ownership. Again, that's going to be in a lot of snacks pumping up the ownership, but two to three times his owned. It's a decent leverage playoff of a player like a Jared Cook, or just another way to get some ownership. Again, tight end position this week. I might play 100% rookie Seals Jones. He's going to be highly owned 10, 15, 20%, depending on your contest, even higher. If you're playing in small field sharp stuff, he might be like 50% owned. But Ricky Seals Jones looks really fucking good. I think we all know that. But if you're looking for some leverage, Hunter Henry makes very nice play. Red zone usage, targets, routes, and now his team is going to have to throw more. The main bet I'm seeing out there is on prize picks. The over 50 and a half for Mr. Hunter Henry. I also don't think it's a bad idea if you wanted to hedge the under here. Like hedging is a real thing. If you wanted to play Hunter Henry for leverage in DFS, but didn't want to take on all the Hunter Henry risk, you could actually take the under here on Hunter Henry. Because look, if he doesn't pay off for you, you at least win your prop bet. And if he's not paying off for you in your DFS lineups, you're not taking a full on zero. But if he is paying off for you in your DFS lineups, sure, you lose your $20 prop bet, whatever 
it might be, but he's probably making you jump a lot of places because he's low owned in DFS. Because so far this year, that 40 and a half number, he only cleared it last week with 75 yards and he cleared it week two at 42 yards, but just barely. Other than that, he is hovering though, 36, 32, 31. So he's right around that number. And now in an environment where you expect him to play from behind, I do indeed like the over 40 and a half, but there is a hedging opportunity over 40 and a half risk-free bet up to $100 use the code SAL on price picks. And now our final play, the 1% flyer, which don't be shocked if he comes in 2%. And obviously every contest is different. This is talking about large field of uh, contests like the Millie Maker and small field. The higher up you go, the sharper the ownership becomes. But a player at $4,900, a receiver this week, he's going to be even coming in lower owned than a, a, a Robbie Anderson. And he should. Last week, after seeing six targets every single week until last week, he only saw two targets last week for AJ Green. And this type of a 1% flyer play, I mean, you can play him as a one-off if you want. It's tough in that price range where you have so many good plays like a T Higgins, like a Sterling Shepard, like even a Robbie Anderson as a leverage. But I mainly want to point out the fact that if you're playing in these game stacking environments between the Cardinals and the Browns this week, and if you're playing Kyler Murray and looking for a game stack, I do like going a leverage play of AJ Green off of Rondell Moore. So the whole point of this one or two percent flyer play is really getting leverage within your stacks this week. Because look at AJ Green. He's played 80% of the snaps or more in every single week. He has only ran his lowest routes run was week one with 28 routes, right? So he's basically averaging over 30 routes run per week. And last week was his first stinker with two targets, just one catch for 13 yards. Before that, he's seeing six targets in every single game. He was scoring in three out of his first four games, at least 13 fantasy points because of the touchdown upside. And then you look at it and you see Rondell Moore, who sure, Rondell Moore ran 20 routes last week, more than Christian Kirk. It's still nowhere near what AJ Green is averaging. And sure, Rondell Moore gets rushing usage and Green doesn't, and he's a more explosive player. But all that is being factored in. I currently have Rondell Moore for eight fantasy points compared to AJ Green's 12 right? So these guys are similarly priced. Ronda Moore is like $100, $200 less than AJ Green. I have AJ Green for four more fantasy points, and he's coming in with half the ownership as Ronda Moore. So this is more mainly, again, you can stack him up as a low one or 2% on guy. I don't think he's ever going to have a Cortland Sutton 120-yard day and a touchdown or two, right? He's, he doesn't have that juice left, but can AJ Green go out there, have four catches, 70 yards and a touchdown, and outscore Ronda Moore by double the amount of points for your stacks? Yeah, I think he can. So this is an interesting spot where if you're playing Kyler Murray, you have Hopkins, you can put AJ Green in there, or if you're somehow playing Baker, I don't think you are but if you are you have a run back option with major green so this is very specific to some kyler stacks or if you just want to throw them into like your million maker lineups i do think that there's some juice at this one percent maybe two percent ownership for aj green the prop bets out there he's got no props in the market really right now i do think it's interesting to find the over his receptions it's probably around two and a half and i would take the over on that for what he's been doing this year but right now it's tough to find in the marketplace so thank you for tuning in there's the, that one dude for week six best play at each position leverage plays let's try and stay hot off of last week and hey Support the sponsors of the show, Underdog and Prize Picks. That's where you can get some of those player props on Underdog. You get a free 10 bucks if you use the code SOUND. Take some props with that. Go ahead. And also, take advantage of all these free things, right? Get as much exposure as you can. And then also, on Prize Picks, you get a risk free $100 bet. If you get the prop wrong, they give you $100. If you get the prop right, they'll still give you $100. So there you go. There's your schmacks for you. First time depositors only. The code SAL on both those sites. Before you go, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate you all a ton for my full ownership projections and my actual projections that we referenced in this video for some of the players. You can check them out on Patreon down below. Join the community, Discord access, and optimizer, all the tools you need. A community of over 900 people strong right now in the Discord. Appreciate you all a ton. I'll see you in the next one. Best of luck this week. There's your that one dude. Enjoy the rest of your day.